Hi, my name is Steve Galton. I'm the instructor at AMC Leeds. This is a video tutorial on Jikundo concepts and blending the ranges, and this is for the Warrior Collective. Now, Jikundo was uh, Bruce Lee's philosophy, uh, and there's a, there's a, there's a subsystem which is Jun Fan Gong Fu, which is Bruce Lee's foundation system, which was the kickboxing, the, the Wing Chun elements, and certain amounts of Jiu Jitsu and stuff. Um, people have different views on this, and it can be a bit political, so all I want to do today is talk about the blending of the ranges. Um, Bruce was a big advocate of this, because certain arts, they, they're very good at close quarter, or they're very good at boxing, or they're very, very good at kicking, uh, or they're very good at grappling, and sometimes they're missing certain elements in between, and with Jeet Kune Do and a lot of modern MMA now, people are, people are very, very good at this blending of the ranges. So I just want to talk about it a little bit. I'll discuss the different arts a touch and just brush across certain things. But I just want to give you just a little bit of information so you get a better understanding of what it is um, with JKD. Because there's a few misconceptions sometimes. Some people say it's just Wing Chun. It isn't. Um, and then some people uh, think that we all fight like this. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> we have that element, but that was a that's a very much enter the dragon and not wasn't actually Bruce Lee's combative system. So, what we want to do is kind of maintain our range. And from my understanding, Bruce Lee was a big advocate of seeing what the person had before he actually went ahead and, and kind of committed to a certain amount of techniques. And he liked something called the stop kick or the intercepting kick. So we're doing we're doing way of the intercepting first. Jeet Kune Do, so we have the Jeet Tech, yeah, which is the stop kick or the intercepting kick. So when Paddy steps in, I'm just going to stop him there. So this is a little bit like what we refer to as a sloppy side kick. Now, ideally, outside, this will be the knee. For training and for the sake of my training partner, I'm going to go a little bit higher on the thigh. If you hyperextend the knee when someone comes in, quite often the head goes forward, which is where the eye jab would shoot it. So, the very first thing that we like to introduce in the system, re realistically, in a live environment, is pain. Because it's so much easier to finish a fight when someone is going like this, than it is when someone is going like this. So, as soon as they step in, they get the knee hyperextension, and then the eye jab goes forward. If the barrier comes up, then this is something we have to clear, and this is where we go to our next range. So, we've gone from kicking to punching. This is what we refer to as trapping range, because it's very close. Now sometimes they will go into the Wing Chun here and you will go into these systems here and this is great. But sometimes you will get, maybe the barrier, he doesn't want to be poked in the eye, it's particularly annoying when people put something up and stop you hitting them, but it does happen. So what, sometimes maybe he would throw the wide hook or a hook. Right? So all we're going to do now, this is what, what we refer to in Wing Chun terms as Tan Sao, and this will be beauty. So all I'm doing is I'm putting an arm in the way to stop me getting punched in the face and I'm poking him in the eye again. So if the first eye jab didn't work, then the second one does. From there, I'm going to low pack on the inside or inside parry here, and I'm just going to brush the face with the side palm or the wan jerk. From here, I would thumb the eye and go past. This is very carly. So in the Filipino arts, when they go past, it's not, you don't just hit to grab, you wipe the eye. So I'm not gouging something out. Yeah, I, I'm not doing 20 years for the sake of an argument. So you wipe the eye and grab here. From here, we're going to go to the elbow, grab, and then we're going to headbutt. With the headbutt, you want to use the front of the head here, or the two horns that you have on either side, and you want to be very careful. As a taller guy, you have to be very careful with the headbutt, so I like to tilt the head using a little bit of wrist and hand pressure this way. And I would pull him into it as I drop the weight down. Makes it much more effective. So I'm not letting him go anywhere, and we've already gone. So let's go through what we've got so far. So he steps in and he gets the G-Tech here. The eye jab gets blocked. If the eye jab didn't get blocked, this would be over. Very simple, I kick him in the groin and I walk away. So we go the G-Tech, the eye jab, he throws this shot. I don't want to say this. So I'm going to put the hand in the way, turn my body, and just poke him in the eye. Again, I'm not gouging, I'm just flicking the eye, enough to make him cover his face or do whatever I need him to do. Then I'm going to slap the hand on the inside, controlling more the bicep region, and cross over this way. Thumb the eye, grab, elbow to face. Fold this down and head button straight away. From here, we can knee once. This can be the groin. 
and then we're going to step and take him down to ground. Now the way I'm going to do this today, is one of the methods that we use, is where I'm going to turn him, similar to the way you would in Thai, but as the knee comes out, I'm going to introduce his temple to my knee, bring him down this way in control. Now from here you could go into Kali and just smash the knee into the head here on the ground, and then go to your hitting, or you could just smash, kick, walk off, this would be fine. If we introduce more Kali slash Sila, then sometimes at the finish what happens here is if he steps in and we go through the lock, we go here, we get this one, here we go, here, 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 knee this one, step down. What they would do is they would wipe the eye on the way down to the ground. So as you put them down here, the eyes get wiped and the head bounces off the concrete and that would be the finish will be here and then we walk away. Jeet Kune Do very much a street fighting system or philosophy, if you will. Now remember, this is blending the ranges. I'm not saying this is how it's going to happen outside. Uh, and I'm not advocating street fighting in any way, but you need something to keep yourself safe, to keep your family safe. It's the whole point of his trainings. Keep you healthy, keep you safe, keep your family safe. So, when he steps in, if this stopped the situation, then that's great. I can go home, everyone's happy, no, one, no one's hurt. If this didn't stop, but this did, I wouldn't need the rest of it. If he decides to keep going, yeah, hopefully this will take care of it. If not, then you would go more serious and it would depend on the situation you're in at this point. But if we take a concept from the Filipino arts of Kali, it's injured to degree. Not all of this is required for me to go home. All the time. Okay. So, we blended from kicking to punching to trapping to grappling. And that's just a small part of the blending of the ranges that we do here at AMC Leeds. If, thanks for watching this tutorial. I'm Jeet Kune Do. For more information on myself or my gym, please visit AMC Leeds or Adaptive Motor Concept Leeds on the Facebook group page. Uh, for more videos or tutorials, have a look at the Warrior Collective online or on YouTube. There's some great videos, great instruction from some great instructors. Okay, thank you very much.